All right, another happy Sunday quarterback, Sean. The Huskers win 14-7 over Rutgers, a day for the defense, and fitting that on the day that they honor Indomitian Sue going into the Nebraska Athletics Hall of Fame, the defense steps up big and really hats off to the Blackhawks. Yeah, and at the beginning of this game, Andy, it, it looked like Manungai was poised for 150-plus yards. A lot of missed tackles. Uh, the first quarter, he was really rolling downhill. And they weren't trying to throw either. They were trying to run into the wind, and they wanted to throw. I mean, but I, I would argue back, the wind was so unpredictable the way it swirled. You just had to do what you had to do. And I, I give Nebraska a lot of credit. Uh, they played the winds the right way in this game. Matt Rule even chose to take the ball first so he could have the decision on the wind for the fourth quarter knowing that. But, yeah, the black shirts came up big. That goal line stand, um, you know, those the, that series of plays where – you know, Rutgers should have scored seven. Nebraska comes up, I, I believe it was eight plays on defense for negative 16 yards. Yeah, which worked into another defensive pass interference or holding that gave them extra chances, but yet the black shirts held strong. Offensively, though, you know, first half was okay. They did enough to score a couple touchdowns, but, man, that second half, credit Greg Schiano and Rutgers defense. They woke up. Yeah, he made some adjustments. He started, you know, bringing his rush a little different at Riola. They dropped some different people in the coverage. Things just weren't there that I think Nebraska expected to be there, and uh, they covered up a lot of what Nebraska wanted to do, and it just made it difficult to find a rhythm, and they couldn't run the ball either. I, I think Nebraska struggled um, to get a consistent ground game in the second half, really, and you know Dante Daldell uh, got going at times uh, in the key moments. You wonder now in this offensive line, Micah Mazuka came in just for some situational plays. Can things turn back around where we see him back in the regular rotation on the O-line? Because I think he would give them a push on the interior, uh, but we won't really know that answer for two weeks. Yeah, the Huskers run it for 97 yards on 42 carries. The leading rusher, Dante Dowdell, 14 carries, 57 yards, and a touchdown. Special teams, they get two punts blocked. But, man, Brian Bushini, credit to him. Bushini came up big, especially with that huge punt late in the game. Yeah, you know, you, you look at special teams under Greg Schiano. he's now blocked 73 punts <laughs> and kicks Amazing. in his career, and, and, he, and he almost took out Bushini for the game. Uh, was said to be a back injury that he came back with. Uh, but, you know, give Nebraska credit. They stood strong uh, when Rutgers was bringing 10 rushers at the punt. They called the fake at the right moment. I don't care how good your punter is, when a team rushes 10, it's really hard to get a punt off. I mean, they're, they're coming at all angles, and there's going to be people unaccounted for. That's why the punts were getting blocked. Nebraska recognized that that's what they were going to do again. They called the fake wide open to Jalen Lloyd. That was Nebraska's best play yeah. of the second half. But Bushini's punt uh, that kind of iced the game was really the play of the day, I thought, to punt it nearly 70 yards on a windy day the way he did. That, I, I could watch that punt all day. Yeah, especially because he had to change up his, his uh, approach to his punt. He was down to a one-step approach, and then once he noticed that they weren't rushing, he went to a traditional three-step approach. And Brett Maher really doing a nice job. Yeah, having Brett Maher on here, because people forget Maher was a punter and a kicker. Yeah. And guess how many games he's kicked in the stadium? A lot. So he understands the wind directions, the angles, and he's kicked in the NFL and done a lot. He kicked in Canada. So just having a guy like Brett Maher that can, you know, whisper advice to the punters and the kickers with his level. He's a former Big Ten punter and Big Ten kicker of the year at Nebraska in terms of all the things he could do. I think that's been a big addition. And he told Bushini, he goes, it's rare that a punter can put a dagger in the game, but you have this opportunity if you hit this punt right. Get it up in the wind, above the stadium, and watch that thing hook. And that's exactly what happened. No doubt about it. And how about this, Sean? Five wins in six games. The Huskers also win a one-score game. They were just 3-19. and 19 dating back to 2021. And now they're one win away from bowl eligibility going into their bye week. This is going to be a good feeling around this, these parts the next couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, I mean, they're so close to being a 6-0 and team, which is remarkable considering where they've been. Um, but to get this win, look, it was an ugly win. Mm -hmm. you, that's how you have to beat Rutgers. That is, I mean, they are going to make it an ugly fight. That, that, that's just how they play. You're not going to get a pretty win. Even the kneel downs are a challenge. I mean, yeah. Greg Schiano was diving at the ball, trying to get them to fumble the snap, and, and, and that's how he plays. And, and for Nebraska to get it 14-7, to it probably could have been a, a bigger win than that. Um, but you, you take it because this is a program now one step away from bowl eligibility with six opportunities opportunities to get there. Yeah, with uh, six games left, four of those six on the road. It all starts in a couple weeks at Indiana.